Good morning. Centering, please. For a moment, we just tune into the great light of God. Using the metaphor of the great, great central sun of the universe. This is the light of God and it shines and gives life and warmth. In this moment, beloved Father, Mother God, we give our heartfelt thanks that you are a presence of love and light, that you bring to us life and warmth, and that this is a light that can never, will never cease. Made in your image, Father, Mother, God, we too are suns, stars, lights in a dark universe. Show us, Father, Mother, God, how to be your presence and how to shine our light. Show us how to be your presence and light in the lives of others, especially during dark times. We ask that you anchor within our being a confidence and a knowing of who we really are so that we might shine as brightly as possible until there is no darkness, no ego, no fear, no hurts, no tears, no regrets left to shine upon. And we give thanks in advance that this is already happening, that this is already downloading in every soul that has ever existed. And then there is heaven on earth, heaven throughout the universe. And so it is. And so Please join me in reading our mission statement, which you can find on the front of this card. Together we say, the Global Center for Christ Consciousness is a spiritual center for students and masters on the spiritual path. We are dedicated to awakening the inner Christ and to creating a world of love, peace, joy, and abundance. And now for our sacred reading. From White Eagle, if you can think of yourself as being all that you know you can be, constant, gentle, loving, kind, to every man, woman, and child, and to every circumstance in life. Kind and tolerant in your attitude towards all conditions on earth. Above all, if you can conceive yourself as being completely calm in all conditions and circumstances, quiet and yet strong, strong to aid others, strong to speak, the right word, to take the right action, the right moment, and so become a tower of strength and light. If you can see yourself facing injustice and unkindness with a serene spirit, knowing that all things work out in time for good, and that justice is always eventually triumphant. If you have patience to await the process of the outworking of the will of God, if you can picture becoming like this, you will know something of mastership. And so it is. Oh, thank you. Okay. Can you share with us what you'd like me to talk about today? Special relationships? Um, okay, special relationships. Yes. The senseless killing of school children and teachers and what we can do about it. Okay. Children of tomorrow. 
Palm Sunday? Passion. Anybody else? Okay, very good. For the folks online, they're asking me to talk about playfulness and murder. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Sedona. <laughs> mm. You know, it's interesting. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about something, and then last week we covered a little bit more. Those of you who remember, it was um, sort of titled The Daughters of Heaven. Um, it's sort of specific. I can't get into that right now. But uh, we talked about it two weeks ago, and then we talked about it last uh, Sunday as well. And then um, I think it was the next day after last Sunday's service, the next day I woke up, <laughs> went to my computer and wrote a book. So um, it's almost done um, after just a few days on the Daughters of Heaven. I, I thought I was not going to write any more books because time is so limited in my time you know, schedule. But anyway, I wrote a book. Um, It'll be, um, it, but the problem is printing, it takes a couple months, so it'll be an out in a couple of months, but it'll be done within a week or so, proofreading and all that. Um, so thank you. But this, this is also a testament about, you know, when we live in the light, walk and live in the light, we're fed. We're fed ideas, inspirations for paintings, new things, new endeavors, you know, people that didn't know they could paint, they're painting, or poetry, or greater friendship, greater camaraderie. I mean, standing in the light of God, we should be affected. It shouldn't be the same old, same old. And I mean, even if you're watching or attending a program like mine or here in, in Sedona as a town or in this center, if, if you're here once, twice, or a hundred times and you're not seeing changes in your life, there's something wrong with that picture. And it isn't us. <laughs> um, could be us but you might want to think about that if it were me if I were in your shoes and said you know oh I've been attending a spiritual center for months I've been using a meditation technique for months whatever it is and I'm not seeing any changes I would evaluate myself if you're going to a 12 steps group and you're the same five years later you know you know you're just attending a group you could go play bingo I mean join poker night somewhere I mean What's the point if you're not changing something? So I love that. I love to, I mean, I can hear a song on the radio and it can change me. At least a bit or a lot. You never know. I think there's God, there has to have been times in my life when I heard a song or a story for somebody told in a group and it just, boom, it's just a matter of seeing what's valuable, calling it in, pulling it in and anchoring it and letting it grow. And when it's not happening, it usually isn't the thing we attended or the song we listened to. Because technically, as children of God, we could turn bubblegum wrappers into, you know, unlocking the secrets of the universe. I mean, we could. We could do anything. A, a song, a title of a song could, could download into something profound. So there are, you know, books to be written or songs to be sung, poems to be written, whatever it happens to be. But... Do we live it? Do we anchor? If you stand in the light enough, you're going to get a tan, you know? <laughs> there should be an effect. There should be something happening, you know? Um, on that note, you know, and, and in honor of some of the things you're asking about, like some of the troubles going on in the world, the crazy behaviors. And some people think, and I think they're partly right, you know what's wrong with this world? As soon as somebody says that, the next thing is going to be inaccurate. It's kind of funny. Because nobody's understanding. The issue isn't, well, we need a different president. We need a different... It, it, it's none of that stuff that the head can come up with. But some people say overpopulation is an issue. Well, it is. It means you're using up more water. You're polluting things more and so on and so on. But it's... it's not an, it's not ever an external thing. If everybody was at peace, they wouldn't be able to ruin a world. They wouldn't be able, they wouldn't be able to toxify a world. There wouldn't be shootings. There wouldn't be anything like that if people found peace. So the only real problem, which isn't capital R real, the only real problem is a lack of God. 
If we are standing in the light of God, we cannot be harmed nor cause harm. There wouldn't be any vibe of harm. The stuff we do to each other is because we're hurting inside. It's pain that's acting out, you know? So, and one of the interesting things about that, this, this, this term validation, just because, you know, there are people that, are, that cause harm. And sometimes they're doing it because nobody's heard them. Nobody has seen them. If you would hear people and see people, they would break free of some of the angst that's building up inside. But on that note, there's valid ways of validating people. There's healthy ways and unhealthy ways of validating people. Generally speaking, validating people is a very healing thing. It builds people up. It restores their soul. You know, like, you're hearing me, but my need for validation is a sickness that could be out of control. So we also shouldn't be validating everybody for everything. It's, get, it's kind of tricky, right? It's a bit of a paradox. Validate, don't validate. Which one do we choose? The right one at the right time. When somebody's you know, it's like the, the concept of uh, we don't bargain with terrorists kind of a thing because that would be validating their garbage. So there's a righteousness to that. But can you meet with such people and also talk about what makes you so angry? What makes you so upset? If you have a child or a parent that's just constantly upset and tense, to sit down and say, well, what's going on? Now, just because you go, okay, I hear you, that's a step. But that too can be very gratuitous. I hear you can become a, a speech, a, just a common phrase. So those people don't know if you really heard them unless you can prove it. And one way you prove it is to repeat back some of what they said or to get it. You can tell me some really crazy things about your life, crazy things you've done. And I can actually find a way in me to understand why you did it, even if it was completely nuts. How? It's called imagination. I can imagine how and why you feel the way you feel. You see? If I can't find a way, it's because I don't want to. I don't have time to figure out why you feel the way you feel. Great. That's called separation, and now we're just in deeper problems. People need to be heard. People need to be validated. But don't validate their ego. So that gets even trickier. There's <clears throat> more than once the, the comments that people asked, the request had the word child in it, whether it was traumas going on or children of tomorrow. So that's something we, we need to address here a little bit. Um, the word playfulness came up and passion came up. People are losing their sense of passion. To feel passion, you have to feel alive. There's something that ignites. The song that we played prior to the service, today's song is Shining Star. And what an amazing song. Most of us remember singing along, oh yeah, 70s, you know, Shining Star, and you just kind of sing along. You can, you're singing these enlightened lyrics and not realizing that they're enlightened. You know, you're singing along to, to bands or musicians or songs that are, they're fun, melodic, okay, cool. But you don't realize you're chanting, shining star for you to see what your life can truly be. They end in a chant for a reason. The writer said, I want this to be chanted. I want it to be drawn into the mind. You're stating it as an affirmation. And people don't realize that's what... I, so there's, you know, parties... And they don't realize you are, you are chanting an affirmation. You are decreeing to who? To God? To everyone, everything. Everyone is a shining star, no matter who they are or have been. Shining bright to see what you can truly be. I mean, wow, right? Should have been a high school class called Shining Star. Instead of, ugh, every other class. God, 
You know, it's to, to, I'm, I'm going to affirm people's remembrance. The problem can be when we talk about validation is validate for a moment people's pain. Hear them. I understand, you know. Well, no, my parents don't love me, and, I, and my parents this and my parents that, and yet they're living, they're wealthy, they have no financial issues, the parents give them anything they want, and so on. But they still need validated. You see, just because you have stuff doesn't mean you don't have pain or don't have troubles. So hear people out. Don't immediately use your head to cancel what they're saying. Well, I'm having marital issues. What do you mean? You're married to that person. Everybody would love to be married to them. Yeah, but nobody knows, you know, what it's like behind closed doors. They don't know that the person's an alcoholic. They just know that they're a celebrity, you see? So hear, hearing people, it starts off, listen to what they have to say. Let them tell you their feelings. Let them tell you their dreams, for that matter. What's going on? G encourage, de develop the place for children to, to be able to share. And if you say, well, your children or children in the world don't have a place to share, then I guess it's up to us to create one. You've got to create a safe space and place. Counselors should be well paid to work in schools, but then their hands are tied when they try. They're told what they're allowed to talk about and not allowed to talk about. See, counselors should be let loose in schools. They should be able to put their feet up and have a smoke if they want to with the kid, if that's what's going to bridge with the kid. Just, you know, feet up. So, you know, how's school? You know, oh, here you go. Oh, there you go. You know, I mean, meet people where they are. See, instead of, oh, you're like that, are you? You know, frowning upon them. How's that bridging? So I understand why there's an angst that builds up in kids. I understand that there are kids that have been bullied and are venting. I get it. I understand it. I'm sure in one lifetime or another, we've been bullied and we have been the bullies. So it happens in this world. But some of the kids, you could have sat and talked to them and it wouldn't have mattered because their ego wants validated. And guess what? You can never validate the ego enough which is why I'm saying it's an ego. Sometimes it's never enough. And that's when you and I need to know, okay, I listened, I heard, I connected, this and that, and they're still going on. They're still going. Then you know they're not wanting to be heard and validated. Their ego is in control, and you cannot win. It's like having a relationship of some form with someone with a personality disorder. All you're going to do is get hooked into something that's not going to go well. I'm not saying we should abandon people or I'm judging personality disorders. It's just an example. You can try to bond with a psychopath or a narcissist, but they've got agendas in every one of those conversations where you're going, I'm here with you. They, they, they've, got, they've got all kinds of agendas to take that to places. And you're unarmed. You know, you think your, your kindness will work. And it's sad because they're that broken. Are they so broken that you give up? No. But you better call in forces beyond yourself. Prayer. Talk to their angels and say, listen, I'm here, a human being willing to bridge with your human, the angels, you know, they're human, that they're watching over. I'm here. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to help. But I'm going to help from a distance. If you jump in to helping people, validating their ego, you're in trouble. But you also missed your test, your learning, your lesson, which was to learn to see when you've gone past a line of safety for yourself. There's a wonderful, probably favorite um, story when it comes to boundaries or validation um, from the Native American tradition. You, some of you may have heard. The elders would sit, you go there with a complaint. Well, my neighbors, you know, too much peace pipe, man. They're just always smoking the peace pipe, you know, and my neighbor and too much smoke and whatever. They listen to you. They give you advice. You come back a second time. Oh, my neighbor, they're still doing this. Did you follow our advice? Well, it wouldn't work anyway. They send you on your way. Go practice what we told you. 
Third time they come back. Well, I want to talk about my neighbor. They all get up, turn their back to you, which I think the Senate should do to presidents. But that's just, you know, wouldn't that be cool? Swivel chairs, you know, instead of those wooden ones, you know, you know, historic wooden chairs, just swivel chairs. You know, wouldn't that send a message like, no, we don't buy it. I think that'd be cool. But anyway, I have all kinds of ideas I could share with you. Swivel chairs in the Senate would be one of them. Turning your back. Now, now, now that's, isn't that kind of cool? Turn their back saying, no. We already answered you, and apparently you don't want an answer. If you do, you'll go practice it, and you'll come back different. You'll come back with a different report. You're repeating the same thing. And it could be us, could be them, or it could be you. We're betting that it's you. Now, you might go, that's you know, pretty brilliant. And one of the reasons we say that, because we go, well, Native, you know, Native Americans, wisdom, elders, so there's, okay, there's a certain prestige to elders. But it's interesting, when you practice that in your house, you're not going to be respected for it. You know, it's, when the kids go and talk to other parents, well, you know, how things go at home? Well, I was trying to talk to my dad, he just got up and turned his back to me. They're going to think it's cruel. When we practice that sort of thing here, oh, those unloving people at the global center. We don't mind hearing native elders and we go, oh, such wisdom. Wow. Native elders. Here, I hate those people. They will not enable my ego. You know? And, and I think it's funny. But it's, this is one of the issues in the world is enabling sickness, enabling hurtfulness, enabling ego. If we could say no, to things that are not of love and not of God, the world would change. But why don't we? Well, we should do that. We should pick it. It's, before you go outside and do it, start here. Do you say no to your own inner voices of ego, your own low self-worth, your own doubts and inner shames and regrets? If you can't say no to those, we shouldn't even be talking about how many people in the world you need to set boundaries with. Start here. Where can I say, you know, that's enough? For example, let's say you're wanting to start a project. You want to take watercolor painting classes or something. And then here comes the voice. Yeah, but can you really afford the paintbrushes? I don't know. I haven't even looked into prices, right? Oh, but already. Oh, you know, it can be expensive. Probably expensive. Really? Here's this dialogue. Yeah, and then, oh, paints. Oh. You know, and I've heard that paints are made out of toxic materials. <gasps> no. Yeah, you better be careful, you know. Yeah, but the teacher said we use safe paint colors. Yeah, but she's trying to get students. She wants money, and you're one of them. Oh, I'm so on to you, you know. I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm aware I'm not like other human beings that are so gullible, you know. And, and if you get past that gauntlet, you're going to end up in places like yeah, but didn't you sign up for paint classes before and not go? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it five times? Yeah, it's true. So you have a pattern of not doing things. So why bother? There's another. So you will shoot down ideas before they even launch. Just shoot them down so that you do nothing. Nothing different, nothing new, nothing fulfilling. Right? And that's perfect. That's where the ego wants people. They want them in the Senate arguing so much that nothing gets done. Invalidate valid things so that nothing gets done. Support craziness because that can't go anywhere good. So only validate things that are invalid and worthless. It's a backwards world. But if we can sit still and say, well, how do I know what to validate in my mind or in other people's behaviors? Just ask yourself a couple questions. First of all, is the thing they're saying loving? That's worth validating. If they're saying something that seems like it's of God, seems like it's of love, then it's probably worth validating. I would say validate people that need to be heard, that, that haven't been heard before. Does that make sense? If you know 
They sincerely want to be heard and they haven't been. I think it's healthy. Let me be somebody who listens to you. There's people to not validate. Don't get too caught in validating people that need to be heard. That's different than I've never experienced that. That I would validate. I need to be heard. Okay, I'll give you one minute. Oh, no, I need to be heard for 18 years. Really? No. I'm, I like quicker learners in my life. You see? People that need to be heard. There's a, that's already an accident waiting to, be happen, you know, waiting to happen. And you've all heard, maybe even said those words. I need to be validated. Ooh. Now, don't show them that face. Don't go, oh, God, one of those. <clears throat> Just go, oh, and inside go, ah, you know. What's one of those? I need to be, val you need to validate me. There's people that will say that. Sedona is a town where a lot of people will say things like that. Oh, I just need to be validated, man. No. It's not going to happen here. You know, it's just show the world no. Whether a person's one year old or 100 years old, either one, there's times to validate and times to invalidate. If the child will cry, unless you, if you don't give them back that pair of scissors, they need to be invalidated. No. You know, but I want to try that the scissors. I'm going to run. No. <laughs> I want to practice knife throwing. You know, no. Val in, you know, invalidate that. No. They'll cry. It, too bad. But I don't want them to not like me. I don't want them to go to school when they're five and... My mom never allows me to throw knives, you know. I don't want to be the mom that's resented, you know. So you give in. You should say no. But there's a hundred-year-old. They're so wise and they've lived a life. And oh, the poor thing. And they're, you know, nobody, you know, they're not getting all the attention they should. And there's times to invalidate them. You see? But there's also times to validate. It isn't the age. It isn't the gender. It isn't the race. It's the content of what they're looking to validate. I want my hatred validated. No. However, try it first to see if it makes a difference. If you say to me, Michael, I have to have a session. What, how can I help you? Well, I've done a lot of research and I've done a lot of looking, soul searching, and I've realized I am the number one most hateful person on the planet. I hate everybody. Every, I hate you, Michael. You know, I haven't met you before, but I already hate you. I hate everybody. Now, I wouldn't say, oh, that's ego. In invalidate them. No. Be stealthy. Try so that you know at least you tried. Any relationship you ever end, you're going to want to know that you did what you could, even if it's a client. I would sit with that person, you know, and, and laugh. I mean, I, there's, I've told this story before, but there was this elderly woman that I knew about 30 years ago, and um, she hated everybody. I mean, she was just a crotchety woman, man. And she would get her little cart with her cane, and she'd, you know, across crosswalks. And if a car, the front of the car was over the line in the crosswalk, she'd stop, beat the hell out of the person's hood. <laughs> get your car! You know, they back, and, you know. And yet... For some reason, when she'd see me in a cafe or something, you know, I used to go to this one cafe and, and buy a, a, a cream cheese um, muffin. And then I would peel the cream cheese off the top and chew on that and give my kids the muffin. <clears throat> I was a great parent. Um, they caught on one day. They did. How come we can't have that part? Well, I guess we'll buy a second one. You guys can split that one, you know. But... But this lady, she'd see me and she'd come in. How's it going? She, something in her found me, felt love. She's not the type to go, oh, look, a loving person. She didn't trust anybody. And somehow she found me and she trusted me. And she told me, I've never liked anybody. I never trusted anybody. And, and I didn't preach to her. I didn't teach to her. I didn't do anything like that. There's a presence we should try and be that shift for them. But don't jump in the quicksand wanting to be that shift. 
You don't jump in the quicksand and say, let me swim to the bottom of the quicksand and give you a foot up so you can get out while I drown. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, but that, that would make me a, a, a good, you know, <laughs> martyr for the world. And No, it, it's not helpful. It's a good test for you to stand on solid ground and reach a hand out. If they take your hand, they have achieved something. If they don't, they have to learn again. But you did your part, right? No rescuing, just offering. So when it comes to validating, those, those who need to be heard, you're in danger. Or sometimes people want you to validate that they're right. I was talking to my brother the other day, my sister, the, my mom, my boss, and I told them a thing or two. They're expecting you to go, yo, you're so right. You were right to tell them that you're much better than all the other employees and that you should be the one getting the raise. You see? They, they, they want that, and you're validating their ego. I'm not saying shoot them down. I'll come back to that in a minute. I'm saying be stealthy. Hear them. See, if I'm listening to you say things like that, I might look like I'm validating you, but I'm only hearing you. There's a difference. I'm validating your soul that you deserve to be heard, but I'm not just because I'm like, oh, you're kidding. I didn't say, and you're right. You should go back to work and beat them up. I, all I did was go, wow, really? You think I'm on your side. I'm on the side of light. So all I'm doing is hearing you. If I'm going to tell you you're right, I'll say it. That was the right thing to do. But if not, I'll say, well, I'm, I probably wouldn't have used that word. You know, moron. <laughs> might have left that one out if I were you. That might have put them on defense, you know, or whatever. I wouldn't want to validate their need to be, hear the word, need. They need to be heard. They need to be right. Understand, that word need comes from neediness, it, which comes from emptiness. And only God can fill an emptiness, not you. So when you try to validate their neediness, again, you're in harm's way. And <clears throat> there are people that will fight and complain just to get their way, not just to be right, not just to be heard. They're going to fight to get their way. And again, you, you see you're in harm's way when you jump in that pool with them. So understand this and recognize. But your job, just because you can see someone's coming from their ego, doesn't mean you should go, oh, that's ego. I'm going to invalidate. I would recommend try first to bridge and see if they're willing to shift like a, a, a railroad you know, engine coming down the track and they have the switch to different tracks. Here they come, same old track, same old conversation. You offer the switch. And if they switch it back and they want to stay on the same track of thought, then let it be. You've done, yeah, it's their choice. But when you offer something else, when I talked to that elderly woman, I wasn't going to get all kinds of like, and then her face glowed, and she had epiphanies and said, I, I see the Lord, Michael. What I was going to get out of her is, well, I don't know about that. And I knew that that meant, wow. She couldn't say wow. It would just be, well, I'd have to think about that and things like that. People that act like that have to be in pain to act like that. Okay? And again, I'm not validating their behavior. I'm understanding it. There's a difference. I get it. I'm validating your soul. So one of the first things, besides the what things not to validate, one of the first things is you validate the soul of a person, not their ego. And the soul has sometimes been through hell. Okay? Sometimes they've gone through a lot. My love for your soul allows me to hear what you're saying. Even if you're saying things in a really rough way, I think it's kind of amazing to be able to hear people put things in such a harsh way and you be so clear that you can hear underneath it all what they're really trying to say, which is nobody's ever cared or nobody's ever loved me. Well, I do. You, know, you can say that in thought or in word. 
It's good to validate people who have rarely, if ever, been heard. Guys, it's, it's not even hours of counseling. Just sitting, really, well, what happened? Allowing them to speak. You're centered enough to know when they're tr if they're trying to pull you into, an, into validating ego or that they're just looking for some validation of their pain, their hurt. Make sense? So saying I'm here, listening to a person, you know, and, it, and it's an amazing thing because they, they say things like, I don't even know why I'm telling you this. Have you ever had that? I don't even know why I'm telling you this. And of course, in the back of your mind, me neither. But, <laughs> but if you're in your center, you go out of the, you know, why are they telling me? That's kind of ignorance. That's a person who hasn't woken up yet. It's amazing when you, you know oh my God, this person is opening their heart and soul. Wow, yeah. Like, something magical must be happening. And I, I assure you it is. That something in you had to have sent a note of music, a note to them that sounded accepting and loving. That you must have sent some sort of frequency out that they felt, and they went for it. And for me, it's been on airplanes, strangers, airplanes, trains, wherever, cars, on the street, in the stores, anywhere and everywhere. And it's just not at all surprising anymore. I don't go, well, this seems kind of weird. I, I just, you know, it, it's, I could be talking to an 80-year-old woman at one of the uh, uh, estate sales that I volunteer at, and she could be telling me, you know, I've always wanted to be a stripper. And I could go, that actually makes sense. <laughs> you know, like, I can make that make sense in the middle of a shopping spree of people. Just get out of your head, and everything starts to make more sense. There are people that have come to you for help, but because they didn't word themselves right, you shut the door on it. Well, I have to validate that you shut the door, probably because you didn't feel very safe in the moment. So I get it. But I'm saying that we will mature more and more to where we can handle a little more of it. See, when we're hyper-defensive, we have to shut the door, set boundaries, and be safe. That's good, especially if you have post-trauma. But you're going to find the more you tether to God, the more you can afford. You can afford one sentence that wasn't very nice, and then you shut the door. A year later, two sentences. Pretty soon, you come to the place where, like Jesus, they spit on him, they do whatever, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. It's amazing. He didn't say, except that guy. He was really extra rude, right? When we really, and I'm not saying you should try to push yourself to the Christ level of understanding and forgiveness. You actually should not. You should not. Even though I'm saying we'll get there, you should not thrust yourself to that place because you will put yourself in harm's way. And then you're going to shut down and pull back complete for maybe lifetimes because you put yourself too far out there. It's got to be an organic process. There's a point where they say something and you breathe and you handle it. They say two things. You breathe and you handle it. One day they say three, couldn't handle, breathe, shut it down, set a boundary, and go look at that. What did they say that, you know, I mean, when they started off and said, you, you know, you're just like everybody else. You're not listening to me. You handled that. But when they said that one thing, you shut down. What was it? Well, when they said that they didn't like my eyebrows, oh, I'm really sensitive about my eyebrows. You need to go look at that. Did you have some tweezing trauma somewhere, you know? <laughs> we'll track it. Look at it, release it, heal it, and now it, you get to where it doesn't matter. When Jesus says, when somebody asks for your coat, give them your shirt as well, what he was saying was, it doesn't matter. When, when people say, I don't like your hair color, he's saying to you, that's like they're pushing their, um, the envelope with you. You learn to find enough center where it doesn't matter. And it doesn't. Does that mean it's easy to hear harsh things? Somebody doesn't like you. You know, you're a musician and you're really, oh, vulnerable. Going out there, you're playing and they go, 
you're the worst musician I've ever heard. Is that easy? You know, you're like, yeah, but in my Christ self, I don't care. No. You're like, unplug, that's it. I'll never play again. And we've all had moments like that where we felt shut down all the way. Is that God? No. Practice asking yourself, is that God? Does that sound like the voice of God? And likely it's not. Therefore, maybe I don't want to listen to that particular voice. I would say people that are coming from a place of inspiration need to be validated. You know, I'm thinking about, I'm going to share this with you. I haven't told anybody. I'm thinking about taking up classes in scuba diving. But I'm 105. And there, you know, some people are like, you can't, it's dangerous, Grandma. We don't want you scuba diving. It could be dangerous. But the concept makes me feel so happy. I think they need to be validated. You know, uh, Grandma, can we start in a swimming pool? You know, you know forget Jacques Cousteau for a minute. Let's just start with a swimming pool. You know, if you're afraid of a shower, we shouldn't even go to swimming pool. You know, <laughs> those who are ill, those not just physically, those who can't feel joy, they should be validated, heard, and validated. You're, you're depressed. Don't validate staying depressed. Validate that it's how they feel today because something brought them there. When people are wanting to find their authentic self, validate them. When people are saying, well, I just, I just feel like my, my marriage or my partnership, I feel like it's over. Validate them. I didn't say, tell them to go file for divorce. Validate how people feel. When you do, it often burns off the rash decisions they were going to make. Honestly, there's emotion that's building and it pushes or compels people to take an action, whether it's shootings or whether it's ventings or whatever. When you hear people, it's like a pressure cooker building and they're going to blow. When you hear people, you're letting out some of the pressure. And they can then think more clearly. Okay? We talk about things like Christ consciousness, daughters of heaven, things like that here. But sometimes it's important that we go and talk about this, the human self, the struggles, not just all the stuff about heaven. It's important that we come back to earth once in a while and talk about what, you know, struggles that people are going through. You know, hearing people, bridging. We just did a workshop a couple of weeks ago or a week ago on spiritual counseling. And that's what we're talking about here. The ability to, you, you, not necessarily licensed counselors, but we're all counselors because we all have opportunities to help people decompress hurt and then bring in the opposite, peace of God. Most of the time when I've ever been helpful to a person who isn't hiring me for a session, just it's the spontaneous randoms, um, Almost never did they know what I do or who I am or whatever. I honestly, and I do not say, and here's my business card. I just do the work. I swear to God, almost never have I made it overt. And you, you, you have no idea the bizarre things. Um, with all my travels, the bizarre things that have gone on in airplanes. Oh my God. Oh, it's just the weirdest stories. One lady who was just out of it, and, you know, I'm like, are you okay? Oh, you know, and, the, and you know, God knows. Set him by Michael, you know. <laughs> Michael got upgraded to first class. Let's get him into the back of the plane somehow. Well, how are you going to get me in the back? I got upgraded. That doesn't happen every day, you know. And then I'm sitting, and look, you know, and there's somebody that I could tell has never gotten to sit in first class. So I say to them, do you want to switch with me and take first class? It's so beautiful. That's bridging. That's being there. That's listening. You, they haven't even said a word. You're listening. When somebody walks in, there's a certain posture, a certain frequency, a certain vibe. When you care about people, love connects things. Fear separates things. And when you love, you know everything. You intuit everything. Intuition is of the heart. Love is of the heart. Humanitarianism is of the heart. Okay, 
So intuition means I know exactly what's going on at any given moment. But I'm not confusing that with hypersensitivity because, oh my God, you know, if you're like hypersensitive, your own boundaries are shot, your aura is it barely there, and you're picking up everything from everybody. You know, it's just like, you know, wow, I think I have an anxiety disorder or a lack of boundaries causing the anxiety disorder. You don't have anxiety. It's hyperstimulus, right? So these kinds of things where you just, there's a knowing. It's not like I need to know the feelings of everybody on the plane. But somehow I zeroed in on that person. What's going on? They look like they would enjoy the first class seat. Now there's that voice. Well, Michael, don't you deserve a first class seat? You know, you deserve God. God wants you to be on. And is that God? Yeah, God's whining. Yeah, that's the voice of God. Ben Michael, don't you deserve a voice? You know? So I'm like, okay, give up the seat. Let them sit. They're appreciated. And then, you know, the, the flight attendants often see that. That was amazing that you did that. And then they say, we're going to give you a comp drink. I don't drink. So then I got to go, hey, do you drink? Yeah. Now I'm farming out drinks. I'm giving out the free drinks that are coming my way. So, it, you know, just keep working it. It's beautiful. This one gal was so upset. She starts telling me how, you know, my partner just dumped me and I'm flying home to my parents. Whole life gone. Nothing left. Flying home to go through the dark night and recuperate in my parents' home. Feels humiliated, lack of love, all that. You know, and she's drinking and drinking, telling me her life. And we flew, I think it was probably four hours. By the time we had gotten there, her head's here and I'm stroking her head and she went to sleep. You know, she just went to sleep. But comforting and being there for people, even contact is beautiful. Um, and, and yet, the woman, while she was asleep, urinated on our seats. And I thought, really? But she felt humiliation, shame. And I told the flight attendants, you're going to need to call and get the seats changed out. And then I walked the gal to find a bathroom. You know, and I went to the opening of the bathroom, go in, told her what to do. She was still buzzed. So I had to, now listen carefully. You've got to go in. You've got to get your, your carry on. Find something to put on. You know, I, I didn't, there's no shaming. There must not be shaming. One time, one time I screwed up badly. Um, and that was where this one gal was having a problem. She was making a scene on the plane and everybody was totally turned off and making fun of her. And I, I got in on it too. The problem was I was trying to bridge with the guys that were most bothered by her. And I was trying to like, yeah, I get it. You know, that's all. I wasn't saying anything, but I was bridging with them, not knowing that she was the one sitting near them, saw me agreeing with them. Even though I didn't do anything horrendous, it broke my heart that I participated and she saw me. And when she got off the plane, I could see the humiliation that I participated in, creating for her. I felt terrible, you know, wherever she is, love to you, you know, because, but the love also made me not forget that I did that. The love still makes me want to, you know, here it is, sending you love. This woman could be an ascended master now, and the rest of us are still here, having bills to pay and whatever, right? Send her the love. Send her the love. And so many kinds of experiences, though, 99 uh, out of 100 that went well, but so bizarre, the conversations. P people sitting 10 rows away, for some reason, looking back at me, and I'm like, you know, what is it, you know, what is it? And uh, do I have a tweezing issues again, you know, <laughs> tweezing traumas? Um, and then... Uh, signaling me, can I come? This one person, a flight to Australia. It's a long flight. She comes and sits next to me, and our conversation went on, you know, about she's wanting to divorce, you know, break up, she's got a young marriage, 
and you know, just talked with her, told her exactly what to do, what to say, to try one last time to bridge with the partner to see if they can meet each other and go somewhere. I'm talking energetically, meet inside. Helping people wherever and however, it, the, the strangest circumstances, um, you just don't know. And you have to ask yourself, what are you, if, if you can change people's lives, do you understand? It's forever. One day you'll pass over and you'll wonder, I wonder what it's like. You know, do I have my life flash before me? What's going to happen? You know, what, what's on the other side? You're going to be surprised to find that you have shot 20 dimensions higher, not one or two, 20 dimensions higher because of the people that gave thanks when they went to bed at night for your help. Not because you were wearing white and you were preaching in the Han Mudra of I am the Christ. You know, nothing profound. Just listening to them. Just being present where they would have otherwise, who knows, taken their life or prematurely made rash decisions. You were there. You listened. Yes, if you're a hairdresser, I know you're listening to a lot of stuff. Yes, a bartender, yes. Massage therapist, you're in a position where you're, you're hearing. And I think that's fantastic. But do you know that whatever level you're already listening, do you know that you can take it quantum leaps higher? Not by doing more, by being more. By not just, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, go ahead and, you know, yep, yeah, oh, yeah. That's, that's listening barely, but you're in a position where they're talking, so you have to listen. That's different. It's when they said that one thing and you put your hand on their shoulder. You pause the trimming of their hair and you put a hand on their shoulder, right? I remember seeing a guy, uh, an amazing counselor friend, and he said, why don't you come in? We'll, we'll talk about some things. And I went and saw him. And might have been the second or so time that I talked to him. is probably in my 20s. Talking to him, and, and two things I remember about this person. One, when I saw tears in his eyes, I knew my life was a little more messed up than I thought. <laughs> but him being present with the feelings that he was feeling, that I shared about my life. You see, him being present and allowing not, oh, I'm a counselor, I shouldn't be allowing his tear. I never forgot it. Wow. It was, he, this person cares? Then it's, wow, I've, I'm being heard. You know, I was telling him things that I didn't share before. I was being heard. His tear was my tears. Capiche? And another time talking to him, I remember he took my hand. Never forgot it. I ha must have had 100 conversations with him that I don't remember as friends and as him being like a role model, father figure. 100 that I might not remember, but I never have forgotten him when he took my hand. You see? It's an act of affection, but not affection, a hug, you know, like uh, uh, intimate types of affection. It's, it's contact. It's love in action, affection. Making sense there? Being the presence of God in the world. All of us are the presence of God in the world, but we're not acting like it. Listen here, validate, but God also will invalidate and say no, not today. Jesus himself at times said no. So being spiritual, as Edgar Cayce put it, does not mean being a doormat. Being spiritual means I'm in touch with myself enough to know what feels right for me and doesn't feel right. You cannot have a healthy relationship with others without having a healthy relationship with yourself. You see? Just, wow, you matter. Really? I, I do? Yes, you matter. It's quite all right for you to say no today. But they may not like me. Do you need to be liked by people who don't care whether you've gone too far, than, more than you can handle? Those shouldn't be your first loves anyway. 
wow, I'm going to start hanging with people that say, hey, if this is too far, let's let you take a break today. Capiche on that? All right. Please take a few centering breaths. Let's take this to a deeper level internally. Remember the value of validating people. Validate that people are children of God and that they have value. Validate that, your value. Don't validate users, people that insist on remaining broken. Say no, but the brilliance comes navigating in between those two. Seeing if you can at all bring them to the side of light, to where they're willing to see a little, feel a little more. If not, you've done what you can and you can say, beloved Father, Mother, God, here before me in my mind is a holy child of God, one of your holy children. And I feel like I've done what I could except for this. Internally, I'm going to see them well. Externally, I can't see how it's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is go inside and see them well. They are a perfect holy child of God, not yet in the mood to be who they really are. So I ask you to let me feel your presence. Let me get there home to higher consciousness, to a state of healed. Bring me there now. And then I'm standing on behalf of my brother and sister who seem to be broken, stubborn, whatever. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna see them home. So at least I've created a matrix of them being home, a blueprint. And it makes it easier for them to step into that. Allow the Holy Spirit of God to bring into your mind an image of anyone that ever seemed hopeless, stubborn, controlling, resistant, whether it was through addiction and you don't validate people's addictions, you offer something else. But you can validate that they're hurting and that led them to addiction because they are hurting for now. Tune into anyone, any image of anyone. How did you interact? Why did they seem hopeless? Observe it. Could be somebody that took their own life and you didn't know what more you could do. Still, it's okay. Stand in your center. To you, my beloved brother, sister, I am saying from my soul to yours. I hear you, I see you, and I understand your hurt, your feelings, your pain. Look me in the eye, you tell them, and hear what I'm telling you. I get it. Sit and accept that someone is getting it. If you refuse to soak that in, it means you want to stay hurt, which you have the right to do, but I don't recommend it. Brother, sister, I get it. I'm sorry. Whatever brought you there. I am going to stand in the light of the Christ that I am. This part of me cannot give up on you, but it also cannot be dragged down by you. 
I'm standing in my center saying to you, I get the stuff, but I also know the truth. You are a holy child of God. No matter what has been said or done to you, you are a holy child of God. My job is to hear the pain and be with you, and I am. And the second part of my job is to say, and now let's move forward. Even if you refuse to go with me, you're going to end up there anyway. You only get to choose when. So join me if you would. And even if you don't, I'm going. And I'll hold a place for you. Partly what Jesus meant in my house, Father's house, are many mansions. I am going to prepare a place for you. It means to all your brothers and sisters, I am a spiritual contractor and I'm going to go and build places that represent your remembrance, your Christ self. I'm already holding that place for you. The vacancy is there for you to fill it. feeling of gratitude settling in. And we're quietly going to do, just for a minute or two, a chant, the one we often do. Love, 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 love. The gospel in one word is love. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love, holy love. If you've not done it before, it doesn't matter. You'll catch on quickly. But what I'm asking for some of us we might think of it as the males or lower voices. All we're asking is that it's repeating holy, 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 over and over. Because I love the symbolism that we, part of our group here and online, are choosing to say, I promise I'm going to hold space for you. And that's the symbolism of holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy. Go, keep going. Holy, holy. A fourth set. Holy, holy, love. Okay, that's it. And you're doing this, but you're, you're knowing. You're a high school kid holding space for the gals. You're a child holding space for your parents. You're a spiritual person holding space for people in the world. You're validating the people that are ready to come home and to have an awakening. We're not thinking about it. We're not judging it. We're not figuring out who is how much. We're just holy, 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 holding space, creating pillars, columns of light for people to build their remembrance upon. Gents, please. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Good, keep going, feel it. Holy, holy, love. Back to holy, holy, ho. Oh, good. Louder. Love. Keep going, ladies. Love, 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 love. The gospel word is love. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love, holy love. Keep going. Love, 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 love. in one word is love. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love, holy love. Keep going. Stand, please. Say it to the world. One more time to the universe. Love, 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 love. The gospel in one word is love. Love our neighbor as thyself. Love, holy love. 
to all people throughout all time. The message of God is love. The message of the Holy Spirit is I love you. Please come home. Our answer today is yes. And so it is. Thank you all very much. We'll share a couple of announcements. Take a minute to integrate, but a couple of announcements and um, collection. Um, if anybody feels compelled to do so, remember, because we did this talk called The Daughters of Heaven. If you feel uh, like that strongly affected you, feel free to email the office with a testimonial, whether it's two sentences or a paragraph, not two pages, two sentences or a paragraph of what happened for you. Because people all over the world are talking about how this did something to them. An activation is the most common word probably that I've been hearing. But if you feel compelled to do so, send it in. Because I'm going to likely include some of these in the back of the book. Okay? All right. Please gather your collections, your, your donations. In the blue bags, those are the donations that just from your heart for the work we do. Any extra donations you would like to offer, they go in the baskets. Um, and that's what, you know, change in the bottom of your purse or just w whether you want to help with some of our special projects. This week we're paying off a new shed building that we put out here. Um, so we would appreciate your support in that. It would be great. Um, but we, or sometimes we're helping people of lesser means. So whatever you feel called to do, donate in the blue bag for foremost, but the wicker baskets are also available. So please take your love offering and hold it to your heart. <sighs> Just a breath or two of consciousness. What did you learn, gain today? How are you going to be different? Appreciation. Who you said goodbye to. Who you gave love to. Ah, oh, just wow. Yes, yes, yes. <sighs> Together, please. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Thank you. It'll take just a minute or two and we'll do our closing prayer. While they're passing those around, remember if somebody's interested in having a private session with me, you can contact the office and we can arrange that. If any time during the week you're struggling, you can call here and ask for the chaplains and they'll work with you during the week. But we also have a chaplain prayer circle um, after services if you're interested. Um, we want to thank everybody on social media who does sharing and whatever other terms there is to uh, pass the word. Remember, share, use your intuition and share what I do, what we're sharing here. Share it with people you feel are kind of ready for that. Don't just blast it out to all your relatives. Intuit the right people to share this kind of thing with because this is unique, what we do. You know, we're uh, really, really focused on awakening the divine and bringing that into the earth plane. Remember, continue arriving on time a little early, in fact. Ten minutes before the hour is best. Even though the people online, it starts on the hour. Here, we have our local announcements, and we also have our group song. So whatever song selected, or if we have a musician, they play a song. So try to arrive early if you can. Um, and um, it's time for this. Today is the first day of the month. So this is the day I set aside, and I do... Every hour for 12 hours, prayer vigil with people. Anybody can join. I'll do the, we've done the first two hours here already, our opening prayer, our closing prayer. And then I'll do another at, at uh, noon. Um, but then the rest of the hours of the day till into the evening. Every hour, I'll sign on Zoom. You can join us and participate. It'll be some prayer and a few minutes of teaching or dialogue. And then we move on to the next hour. It's a great thing to set one day a month aside for God, for union, for connection, helping to disperse the heavy stuff this planet carries 
and also to enhance our connection with spirit. So that's the first Sunday of every month. Next Sunday, April 9th, is we're having back John Dumas, Nina Starsong, Alexander, presenting Mystical Sound Codes Activation. This special event will be a sonic soul baptism to bathe in the heavenly frequencies. So join, up if, join us if you can. There's flyers in the foyer about it, and it's posted on our website, and our e-blast that goes out will also tell you. And we changed our e-blast a bit. Please be kind, and when you see your monthly e-blast, um, we wanted to lessen the quantity of stuff in there. So it's basically announcements only. You click on it to read the more text about those events. And lastly, the weekend of April 14th through 16th, Bill Foss will be back sharing a transformational three-day workshop, Journey to the Akashic Records. So that workshop, he's, he's quite renowned for his work with accessing and working with the Akashic Records, okay? So we encourage you to, to do that. Um, thanks for your patience as well with <laughs> my voice. <laughs> you know, I try to keep it at a certain uh, tone so that I can still speak. But as you can see, if I go to accentuate, it's, <laughs> I become like Donny Osmond or something. Anyway, Marge from The Simpsons. Thank you. I mean, I'm going to go do some tracking on that. <laughs> That's, that's a first. Michael, your teachings are like Yogananda. Michael, you sound like Marge from The Simpsons. <laughs> Thank you. It, it did have that tone, didn't it? Didn't it? Please stand for our closing song. Oh. Can anyone share what you heard, felt, experienced in the meditation or in the talk? What can make a difference in your life. What did you hear that was valuable? Might make a difference in your life or the life of the people around you. Yes? Instead of being a doormat, be a matador. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a doormat, a matador. Um, Get rid of the bull. To me, one of the best things is the reminder that we can always pray for people, even if we can't get <clears throat> through to them, or you know, right. if something's going on, like you know a friend of mine I'm talking about. And it's just like, you know, just send the prayers. Just send mm -hmm. the love, send the prayers, and trust. Right. Trust. The prayers work. I mean, when we give up on people, all the work you've done to try to help somebody, support somebody, whatever it is, all the work you've done, and you can sort of give up, don't forget, you forgot the most helpful thing of all, God. You know, bring the affirmation that people are fine even when they don't want to be. You're fine. I'm holding a, an immaculate, pure image of you at the other end of this. Remember when Jesus said, you're going to betray me, you're going to deny me, his apostles are like, no way. Remember his response. It's okay. You're going to do these things. But I'm already holding a vision of you at the other end. You're going to betray me. You're going to feel guilty and ashamed. You're going to even want to kill yourself over it as one apostle did. You're going, to, you're going to go through all that. And yet he says, but I'm already holding an image of you at the other end. You're going through a divorce. You're going through a death. You're grieving process. Remember Christ, God, and some of us are saying to you, we're already holding an image of you at the other end of that. So that's a true stance, a statement, an example of patience. Patience of the saints, it's called. And what that means isn't that I'm so patient with messed up people. It means I'm so patient that I'm looking forward to the day you reach the real you. And I'm holding that that's where you're going. Yes? Um, one of my favorite words is intimacy. Intimacy. And it's my way of bridging with other people. And it opens the door for them to into me. Right, right. Intimacy. And the word intimacy coming from intimate, an in time mate, friend, not partner, lover, mate. So when I'm being intimate, I'm choosing to hold you as an in time, a mate, a friend in time. We're on an airplane, we're at a bus stop, we're in the store. I hear you. I understand. How can I help? 
that pulled you into an intimate relationship or a holy relationship? Yes. Right. Very good. Recognizing the difference between rescuing versus true empathy. Yeah, right on. Thank you. So you don't end up a rescuer and burned out. Exactly. Yes. Validate that people are hurting, but don't validate the ego that wants them to stay hurting. Right. Yes. Thank you. I asked Michael to talk about Palm Sunday when he said, what oh, yeah. you like? and you did. What you said was, reach out your palm. Oh. Right? <laughs> Isn't that a beautiful way to think of Palm you. Sunday? Yeah. It's not about the trees or the plants. It's reach out our hands right. to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I just want to express gratitude for being here. Today. Expressing gratitude for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Isn't it? I mean, isn't it something, right? This vibe, the people, and right? And I think that's important to remember. Um, I'm, I'm doing talks, and I'm standing here, and, all, and I'm wonderful. But, <laughs> but someone comes in. They do not come in and stand there and go, he's amazing, and as though the crowd is, like, dull. You, you acknowledge that you feel something here. And it's it's the intention of all of us. Even someone who's just stepping in for the first time, they're adding somehow to this, I wonder what this is about, and the word wonder. I wonder the wondrousness of the intention of the, this kind of group. And more of these could be used all over the planet, wherever you are. The last couple people, yes. If you're not changing, something's wrong. If you're not changing when you experience these things, something's wrong and it's within you. Listen, I mean, you know, listen. And, and what did I hear today that could make a difference in my life? How can I bring that to others? Not in a preachy way, but just how can it make it? If all you heard was, well, he said something about, I, I disagreed with everything he said, <laughs> except that thing about holding a vision of people at the other end of their tests. That'll make a difference in everybody's life. Just if all you got was one thing, but you have to own that you got it and that you're going to practice it, which means you're different. Some people will brush off that they're different for some reason. It's a form of denial of positive change. Why? Let's go for it. A last person or two. Yes? Um, two people mentioned children. Uh, the, yes. Uh, Yes. Yes, the importance of listening and, and to, to, to the children. Yes. And I'm going to say it this way, too. Listen to the child within everyone. Right. The person can be a hundred. Like the lady, I used that example. I shared that story. That was a, a girl who had been hurt in so many different ways, so many different ways. And she outed all of it to me. And she never told anybody any of it ever, you know, and I knew her enough, got to know her enough to, to know that that was true. Listen to the child, the children, but the child within us, you know, no matter who, I, I don't care, don't rule anybody out of being worthy to be heard, other than the ego that it's never enough. Say no. And then you're giving the soul of the person the opportunity to say, you've shut down my ego I think I like that. I like that you shut down and go with you somewhere new because you're not going to be able to bargain with the ego. All you can do is teach the person how to say no to their ego. One last one. Did you have your hand up? No. Yes. I love the bit on the counselor uh, smoking with the child. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being, going to counseling in school and uh, always wanting maybe subconsciously that bridge. Right. Yeah. Bridging, guys, bridging. Yes. I'd like to know, or I'd like to actually take the feeling that is in this center and take it out and 
practice it right. during the week. Right. And the other thing I want to say is, can you imagine how hard it must be for a person to live to 100 and carry all that pain? Yeah. 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 To have lived so long and carried so much hurt, people, people deserve to be heard. And, and the question is, do I have the courage to listen? Because when I brush you off, it shows where I'm at. It shows my level of consciousness. When I shut you down, or, you know, and, and I want to look at that and say, at the end of the day, I didn't shut down. It shows, I, at the end of the day, I'm still open. So I'm great. it shows my status, my state of mind is beautiful, grand. Um, I was able to listen to where people were coming from and, and know, you know, when it's from the ego and not. But what you shared were a few things, and thank you. Very, very beautiful. What was the first part of what you said? To take it with you. Thank you. So how do you? It's an ugly world. Yes. Like, you know, we're going back out there yeah. to a toxic world. Yes. And again, validation. Watch. Some of you are just attending, which means, well, that was nice, and, you, and not, no change. You know, no difference. You just attended something. And you're allowed. I'm validating. You're allowed to just attend. But I'm holding an image of you at a point where you don't just attend, but you decide, I'm not just an attendee. I'm a light worker. And a light worker is always holding up a candle, being lit by others or lighting others. They're always working it. Always. I, I will not be asleep today. What can I learn? What can I hear? And I'm on airplanes in those days of touring. Always, always integrating. I mean everything. Everything. I would look out and see something in the cosmos happening in the stars, and it would download something to me. I can shut down and go, you know, uh, no, there's nothing to learn ever from anyone. And, and then I have the consciousness of a brick. <laughs> I could also be one that goes, wow, the wondrousness of child mind. Wow. Look at the rainbow. And then downloads, colors, people, variations, all working for the gold at the end of the rainbow. It becomes a story to tell. Now I get somewhere and I arrive. Hi, let's talk about rainbows and pots of gold. Because I saw something when I was flying. You see, it's just so beautiful. Stay open and a channel of what is here, God, rather than just hurt pain and staying stuck. Our closing prayer, tuning in for a moment. How do we take this with us? We choose to. It's all you just decide to. And if you just ask yourself one question, what did I gain today? You're already halfway there. You're already, because you asked your consciousness, what did I gain? There's an answer. Now you're different. Don't sit with your mind shut. Open. What did I gain? And sometimes just say, all that I gained, without knowing details. All that I gained and I know I have. I joyously affirm gratitude for everyone and everything shared here today. The light of God surrounds us. We are the, light of God. the love of God enfolds us. We are the, love of God. the power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we go, God, God is, is, I am, am we, we are, and so it is. God bless you all. Peace be with you. We'll see you.